You know when you're just minding your own business and then suddenly find out you're not the only one in the room? <laughs> That's either the start of a horror film or a parenthood. Only way to tell is peeing on a stick. So, <sighs> cat's out the bag. We got a future wine ever on board and he somehow already single-handedly added multiple categories to our budget without even showing his face. So if that isn't power. But truly throughout our three years together here, I heard it from Hannah. I've always shared with y'all how my budget has changed as life has changed. From living with roommates to renting my first townhome solo. I added a whole dog to the budget, got engaged, planned a wedding, bought a house, moved. And now, because I just couldn't keep y'all waiting for the next life stage, we're tweaking the budget ever so slightly to make way for a new little nugget. And for someone who theoretically only eats and sleeps for the first however many months of his life, man, the guy's got a lot of financial demands. Now, I won't lie, I did what probably every American does when they first find out they're pregnant, googled how much does it cost to have a baby? And can I just say, wildly unhelpful. <laughs> because when does that phase how long? Is it like a year or like 18 years? And how does Google account for the cost of living in different regions or different family values or even how much time you had to financially prepare beforehand? It can't. So immediate letdown. But being the hardcore budgeter that I am, I knew right away that the one thing that was for sure in my control is how the budget rolled with this turn of events. So if you wanna, let me just walk you through literally step-by-step step what we've done since finding out this news late last year. First, before overwhelm kicked in, we just got the barest of bones into the budget. My husband has always called our dog Dingus out of love. So naturally the baby was immediately nicknamed Bingus. So we created a baby Bingus category group. Do we have any idea what's supposed to go inside that group? Honestly, not a clue. But we did it because sometimes you just have to take that first baby step to get the ball rolling. Uh, no pun intended, I don't think. Next, we added categories as they came about. The very first category to hit our baby Bingus group was a prenatal vitamins. What, a whole category for one consumable product? Yeah, dude, might seem random, but it's a real expense. I bought a $60 prenatal that contains a three month supply. So rather than being hit out of the blue with a $60 expense every three months and not really knowing where to categorize it, I just started tucking $20 into this category every month to be ready whenever my first bottle ran out. Hurts way less, just trust me on this. Next, we increased current areas of spending we knew would naturally increase. I was a bit surprised how many other vitamins and supplements came into play early on during pregnancy. I am a big fan of magnesium flake baths. I love taking chlorophyll every day, some collagen, and all those little extra supplements and vitamins add up real quickly. So we made sure to bump up how much money went into our health category each month to adjust for the influx of health. Next, we made a home base category to just start saving. This was where the stress came in because after making our prenatal vitamins category right off the bat and feeling extremely on top of it, I was like, what else? I didn't know. <laughs> I'd never carried a human before. So we made a category very intuitively called baby stuff and just started throwing some money in there every month just to get the ball rolling while the financial mysteries of pregnancy and newborn babies slowly revealed themselves to us over the next few months. <laughs> it's a lot. Next, we planned a baby budget overhaul date. This was probably the most pivotal step in knowing which direction to take the budget. We literally put a baby budget overhaul night on our calendar where we both sat down and really took a good hard look at how far our monthly income takes us with our current expenses and spending trends. And we did this at 18 weeks pregnant, by the way. So if you're like, wow, Hannah's still on top of it. <laughs> you're very kind. The main reason we did this is because we knew we'd need to start funding a brand new mortgage. <laughs> I mean, childcare category once maternity leave ended for me and it was time to get back to work. We deduced that full-time daycare in our area was likely about 12 to $1,500 a month, literal vomit. So that's like a major new monthly expense that needed to fit into our budget without question. Next, we trimmed down our current plan and reallocated to our new priorities. AKA, we played the shave and save game all night long, taking $20 off this category, $50 from this other category. And that may sound like a lot, but 
our priorities are truly shifting 100% here. Pre-baby, we were very intentionally loading pretty hefty amounts into some of our savings categories like home repairs and car repairs in anticipation of this very life change. This helped us build up a very substantial reserve, which allowed us to feel so much more comfortable lowering our contributions to these kind of categories once there was a baby in the picture. And fun money. <laughs> We had like a lot of fun money. Really live in that dinker life while we could. Next, we cried. <laughs> Not a necessary step, but just fair warning, it's bound to be wedged somewhere in this lineup from one of you and it was mostly me, I'll say that. In all seriousness though, this budget overhaul was not without a few, uh, many tears and feelings of total overwhelm. Just because I teach this stuff and we've been budgeting for years doesn't mean huge life transitions don't totally phase us or that there's no adjustment period. It's scary to see the numbers that you've had so much comfort in change and spread a lot more thinly or in entirely new and unknown ways than before. But adapting is our best tool and I'll be darned, we will adapt to the very best of our abilities. Next, we ushered all extra inflows of money straight toward the baby. By some weird stroke of luck, the skies opened and we received a tax refund, a freaking bonus during this period, cashed in a financial gift from a grandparent and received that weird glorious third paycheck in March because some months just have too many Fridays. Thank you calendar creators of yore. You best believe we tossed almost all of this into our delightfully vague baby stuff category just as a sort of placeholder for now with the intention of splitting it up into more specific categories later when we kind of knew a little bit more what we were doing. Yeah, that day's coming, right? 2042, can't wait. <laughs> All right. Next, we made it easy for others to help us. <laughs> After the slight moment of panic, I also remembered that our friends and family love us and I started throwing together a baby registry. Thank you, baby list. Which PS is a wild task for someone who's never raised a human from scratch before, let me tell you. So hopefully we'll get a few expenses covered via that, but I don't wanna bank on that at all. So we're still gonna budget for everything we need and be delightfully surprised if someone gives us an item from our registry. So then we started to get granular about our specific needs to prepare for the baby, because he's real, which is weird. Now, all my many hours of registry research led to the eventual creation of the nursery category. This is the category where we've started tucking extra money for all those nursery furniture essentials. A crib, a changing table, a little dress over, a little clothes, and a comfy chair for late night cuddles, she said optimistically as someone who is still getting sleep. So we moved some of that vague money out of the baby stuff category and into this nursery category now that we had some more specific dollar amounts in view. We also created a similar category for baby gear. Think stroller, think high chair, pack and blade, diaper bag, car seat. Now this category I've quickly learned can be a slippery slope, my friends. When I asked the YNAB team what they budgeted for when expecting their first baby, Jesse Meekum, founder of YNAB and father of seven, no less, wisely advised me to imagine we were having our baby a hundred years ago and ask ourselves, what would we need to successfully raise a baby then? Times have changed people, but like, not that much. <laughs> In a day and age of wipe warmers and bottle sterilizers and baby food blenders that are actually just regular blenders with a smiley face printed on it, you could easily spend thousands on items you'll use once and decide to take up too much space or aren't worth your time or you just literally don't have enough outlets for it. So I'm glad we were encouraged to decide early on what our essentials are and hone in on those. Now, We'll see if that actually happens, but. Next, we gave big ticket items their own categories and targets to reach. Now this loaded baby gear category kind of made us realize there were a few bigger ticket items that probably deserve their own category. Like we've been eyeing a very specific car seat stroller hybrid for a while now, but it is definitely the bougiest item we registered for. I highly doubt anyone would buy it for us unless angels were sent from bougie heaven. So I wanna guarantee that we set aside enough money for it to be able to snag it a month or so before the baby comes. For categories like this with a specific dollar amount, we know we'll need for it. We always set a target for it by the date we wanna buy it by. And now I know we've got the right tools in place to help us not lose sight of those more specific goals. Oh 
Next, we stopped neglecting our own new, but still basic needs. Another category I was trying to avoid as long as I could, maternity clothes. As much as I've been trying to milk the sundresses and biker shorts with oversized t-shirts, my sweet, sweet husband reminded me, you can't do anything about the way your body's growing. You deserve to feel good and confident in what you're wearing, so let's go buy the clothes. Also, TMI, for all you first time moms out there, you truly outgrow all your clothes if you catch my drift. So even if you're not planning on buying maternity clothes, you'll still likely need to size up in some other items. Next, we made room for special expenses and values that mattered to us. My husband and I decided to hire a doula we love and trust to help walk us through baby prep and help us build our birth plan and support us during labor and delivery. This allows Mac and me to spend more time just focusing on getting our little guy here safely and not stressing about all the other details. We're also planning to use a birth center, which we plan to pay for most of through our HSA, which luckily is pretty well stocked for a time such as this. However, as we get closer to delivery and cost becomes more clear, we may create an additional category for this where we can budget for whatever our HSA doesn't cover. And lastly, we started looking ahead to what new needs will arise once he's here. We plan to use a diaper subscription service, so add it to the budget. I imagine we'll also be adding a category for breastfeeding supplies, baby medicine. It's also been recommended by many of the experienced parents in our lives to just bite the bullet and bump up the amount we're budgeting for our takeout category, at least for the first couple months. When I laughed at that, they didn't blink. So, but that is all we're doing for now. We're not fully funding our childcare category just yet, but rather starting to practice paying for daycare by putting a little bit more in there each month. Not only does it help us adjust a little more slowly to this insane new expense in the budget, but it'll also give us a nice nest egg in this category by the time we do actually need to start paying for childcare. I did want to share with you though, as some parting thoughts, what my coworkers said when I asked them what else they budgeted for it when expecting their first. Most importantly, if your employer doesn't offer paid maternity or paternity leave, you'll wanna figure out how much you'll want in income replacement to support you and your family during that very special time home with your baby. Many recommended making room in the budget for some specialty wellness practitioners like prenatal massage therapists, chiropractors, pelvic floor therapy, pre and postpartum doulas, lactation consultants, or postpartum therapists. Some budgeted for extra ultrasounds, a baby moon vacation before baby arrived, subscription fees for their favorite pregnancy and baby apps like Huckleberry or family photo sharing apps, some much needed pampering for mama both before and after birth, not complaining, and a lot of these experienced parents adamantly recommended adding a middle of the night desperation purchases category, like a lot of them, <clears throat> which is encouraging. For those of you whose journey toward parenthood hasn't looked how you hoped, a sweet friend of mine who's saving up to pursue IVF with her husband shared two important categories they plan to fund right alongside their IVF category, that is acupuncture and therapy. For those considering adoption, my friend Ernie of the Budget Nerds shares an excellent breakdown of how he and his wife Christy budgeted to adopt their three sons, complete with their full list of adoption budget categories, which I'll link down below. Also linked below is a blog post from my friend Laura and her husband James, who documented literally every single penny they spent on their baby from conception through his first four months in the world, which is amazing. And I have have two stellar blog posts from my friend Ashley, all about budgeting for baby, what to expect, definitely check them out. Truly, we're just entering a whole new world and it is wild, but we are so grateful for the confidence and security YNAB gives us during these huge pivotal seasons of change and couldn't imagine welcoming this baby as confidently as we are without it. And if YNAB or budgeting in general is a completely new concept to you, check out the description below for how to learn more. As always, thank you so much for joining me and watching this video. I have appreciated your community and company these past three years every single day. It feels just as exciting to share our pregnancy news with you guys as it did my family or my friends. Also, tips are welcome. What have we totally overlooked budgeting for? Please let me know, stat, put it down below. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you guys in the next video.
You know what would be a good Heard It From Hannah challenge? See if I can make it through filming a whole video without singing a song. That would never happen. In all seriousness though, <laughs> Why are the words so hard to say? I know them all, I learned them all when I was younger, but I can't say them anymore. The main reason we did this is because we knew we'd be, um, needing to... Drag it. English. Do you remember how it goes? No, oh, I don't. Oh my gosh, my prof. Just occurred to me that this poor child has countless videos of his mom singing to herself on the internet. That's gonna be fun for him. Never did I think that for my full-time job, I'd be showing off the size of my belly on the internet. <laughs> I get paid for that. That's weird.